When we're diagnosing addiction, we base that diagnosis on a list of criteria that can be summarized as the four C's, control, compulsions, cravings, and consequences. Control means that I repeatedly tell myself I'm only gonna have one glass of wine and I find myself drinking more than that. Or I committed to cutting back from watching TikTok videos, but I still am not able to cut back from watching videos. So in other words, our consumption is not within our voluntary control. The second C has to do with compulsions. That means a whole lot of my mental real estate is occupied with thinking about the drug, getting the drug, maybe hiding the drug from others, recovering from drug use, and doing it again the next day. And there's a certain level of automaticity where I can engage in using that drug even when I'm not planning to or thinking about it. For example, somebody driving home who has planned to not drink and then finds themselves almost unconsciously driving into the parking lot in the bar, going to the bar, ordering a drink, and then wondering how they got there. The third C has to do with cravings. Cravings are intense urges to use our drug of choice. It can manifest as intrusive thoughts of wanting to use or complex internal narratives of why it's okay to use, even though I committed to not using, or even physical manifestations of cravings like cramping, sweating, nausea. The fourth C of diagnosing an addictive disorder is really the most important one, which is consequences. And these consequences can take many different forms, physical health consequences, mental health consequences, job consequences, relationship consequences, school consequences, spiritual consequences, like living in a way that's not in accordance with my values. All of those consequences may be things that I see and recognize, or may be outside of my ability to really observe the true effect of my consumptive behaviors. But maybe people around me are telling me, hey, I think there's a problem here. One of the classic features of addiction is something that we call denial. And denial is this strange phenomenon where we're genuinely not able to see the negative consequences of our addictive behaviors. We continually rationalize to ourselves, I've got this under control, or this isn't really a big problem, until perhaps everything comes crashing down. So in addition to those four Cs, we have physiologic changes that occur as we become addicted. One of them is called tolerance. Tolerance is needing more of our drug in order to get the same effect, or finding that our current dose is no longer working for us. So for example, somebody who uses cannabis might find that initially it helps relax them, it helps put them to sleep, but over time they need higher and higher doses or in more potent forms in order to get the same effect. Or they might find that with a behavioral addiction like pornography, they might start out watching tame, relatively common forms of pornography, but with repeated use, they need more potent forms, more deviant forms, or maybe even illegal forms, or maybe they're escalating from pornography to actually meeting with prostitutes or engaging in other risky behaviors. This is tolerance. It's a manifestation of physiologic changes in the brain. Another common symptom of addiction is the phenomenon of withdrawal. Withdrawal is a physiologic response to stopping my drug. And again, throughout when I talk about drug, I'm not just talking about things we consume, I'm also talking about things we do, behaviors that we engage in. So withdrawal is the manifestation physiologically of not having my drug of choice. And the universal symptoms of withdrawal from any addictive substance or behavior are anxiety, irritability, insomnia, depression, and craving. 
you'll notice all of those are psychological symptoms. Of course, we can have physical symptoms when we withdraw from a drug, but in almost all cases, even when there aren't physical symptoms, there are the psychological symptoms, anxiety, irritability, insomnia, depression, and dysphoria. Addiction is a spectrum disorder. So that means we have mild, moderate, and severe forms of addiction, as well as pre-addicted states. That is to say, we're all a little bit addicted to our smartphones, probably. But we don't call it a mental disorder or a disease process until that individual has crossed over into meeting those threshold criteria, the four C's and or tolerance. 